Okay, excellent. Done. Right. Are well, you gonna, are you going to keep an eye on the just in case anyone else comes along, Sharon? Is that what you're going to do? Just yeah, I can do that. Um, okay. Cool. Right, well, welcome everybody. Thanks for turning up. Um, thanks, John and Sharon, for inviting me to speak to you all. I've met some of you, I know, when I came over to Ireland earlier this year. It was a great, brilliant conference. And those who are new here because you've joined from JHA tonight, um, the Irish Hypnotherapy Conference is going to be again on again in April in Dublin. And I fully expect that we're going to have a big contingent from Ireland, uh, from England coming over. And so, uh, you know, just keep that in mind. We'll talk about it as we go through. But uh, say welcome, everybody. This evening, I'm going to be talking and taking you into hypnosis to give you the experience of an unconditional self-love. And recently, I'm talking about the last year or so, it's been my mantra. Because how this came about was that um, I run... I'm going to mute, I mute everyone, if that's all right, yeah. Sharon, just in case. Yeah, just, yeah, sorry. Can you do it or shall I do it? Yeah, you see, I can't, I have no control now because I've I've given you the, uh, made you a co-host. So maybe okay. if you, <coughs> or I made you a host. So maybe. I, I, if, I'm going to mute everybody. Yeah. If you, if you do want to speak, switch your mic back on. It's just a, to save any embarrassment, because I know sometimes <laughs> some strange noises come without without you knowing what's going on and if you do make a strange noise it will light up on the screen so i'm going to mute everybody okay all right okay all right so as i said i'm going to be talking about unconditional self-love and i'll tell you how this came about uh i run as most of you know i run the jha jacqueline hypnosis academy with my son anthony and we train live online so um when we demonstrate any kind of technique we ask one of our students if they want to be a demo subject. And this week we were running, this week I'm talking about, about a year or so ago, 18 months ago, um, we were running the um, lesson on changing a negative habits. So my, my son asked for a volunteer, and a lady put her hand up, and he said, um, yeah, how can I help you? And she said, I want to stop swearing so much. Right. So that's that was a that was her goal. She said, I've got a habit of swearing too much. So I want to stop swearing so much. So anyway, my son Anthony worked with her. And afterwards, I said to him, you know, there's still class going on. And I said, why didn't you ask if um, if the lady wanted to quit smoke, uh, quit swearing completely? He said, well, that's ridiculous. You want to stop swearing completely. It's part of our language. So I said, stupidly, I said, well, I don't think we need to swear. So I'm not, I'm going to stop swearing. Right? It didn't work, by the way, but I said, that's what I said. I said, I'm going to stop swearing. And because I'd said that, I was very aware of when I was swearing. And I realised that all of the swearing I was doing was at me. You effing this, you stupid that. You know, all of the swearing I was doing was aimed at me. And I was talking to a friend in Australia who's also a hypnotherapist, but she's also a genius as well. And um, I was telling her about it. So I thought it was funny when I said it. I said, you know, all the swearing I'm doing is swearing at me. And she said, well, she didn't think it was funny at all. She said, well, that's self-abuse. And she was serious. She said, that's self-abuse. And I even really thought about it like that. The way we talk to ourselves. We don't talk to our friends like it. We wouldn't talk to our colleagues like it. And yet the language we use ourselves can be terrible. And I was doing that to myself. She said, what you need to find is an unconditional self-love. And because she was a hypnotherapist, she helped me get to that state. And once I got into that state, your life changes. Because all of a sudden, I started to eat differently. Why would you feed rubbish to someone you love? Why would you be really harsh on someone you love? You know, if your friends put on a couple of pounds, you wouldn't stop loving them, would you? And yet when we put on a couple of pounds, we beat ourselves up terribly over it. If we make a mistake, we beat ourselves up over it. And so feeling, getting a feeling of unconditional self-love for me now is the bottom line for every client of mine. I want them to experience a feeling of unconditional self-love. 
Why would you quit smoking if you don't care about yourself? Why would you bother to make the effort to create the body you want if you don't care about yourself? And so for me, I think it's the bottom line for us as therapists to take our clients. I've always wanted my clients to understand their worth and their value, but the feeling of unconditional self-love, and that's not an arrogance. Oh, I love myself. It's, it's wanting for yourself what you want for your clients. To, to treat yourself with the same love and kindness that you treat the people in your life. That's what I'm talking about here. You know, in England, we use that as a derogatory term. Oh, look at her. She loves herself. Look at him. He loves himself. What we should be saying is how incredible. She loves herself. How wonderful. He loves himself. You know, that's my thinking on this. I know, say, oh, well, we, do you want to say I love myself? But I'm saying that feeling into that and knowing that you're worthy of that unconditional love, I think is majorly important for all of us if we are going to live as long as we can and be as well as we can. As I said, why would you continue to smoke if you love yourself? Why would you do that to yourself? Why would you overeat? If you if you love yourself, you know, I've got a little dog called Lucy and I love her and I believe she loves me. She annoys me because she wants to play ball all the time. You know, every time she gets near me, she's got a ball in her mouth and she wants to play. But she loves me. I know she does. And I love her. And I'm saying, to, you know, and, and I'm saying the bottom line for me is to just treat myself with at least the same love that I treat Lucy. If. And I do want Lucy to be as healthy as she can be and be around as long as because I love her. Then I'm going to feed her the right food. I'm going to buy the most nutritious food for my dog. And I'm going to make sure that she's only going to eat a certain amount of that food because she's a dog. And she's not brilliantly intelligent when it comes to knowing how much she should eat. And if I, if I sit, Lucy's going to sit with me. If I sat for 10 hours a day, she would sit with me. If I want my dog to be well and I want her to be fit and well, then I have to walk her. I have to take her for a walk. And what I'm saying here is we should at least be as kind to yourself as you are to your dog. <laughs> you can't you know it's not it's not a very high bar is it to say oh, i'm going to treat myself as well as i treat my dog but just think about it we don't i had a client once came to see me and he pulled up in this i think it was an audi r8 and it's like a hundred and twenty thousand pound car and he pulled up the outside this guy was like eight stone overweight smoking and he was in his 50s and he said, my dad died when he was 54. I'm 53. He said, but I'm smoking. I'm drinking every night. He said, and I'm overweight and blah, blah, blah. I said, uh, I said, you've got a really nice car. He went, yeah. I said, did it cost a lot? He said, yeah, it did. I said, do you have it serviced? He said, of course I do. It's a brilliant car. I said, what fuel do you put? You put cheap fuel or the expensive fuel? I said, I put expensive fuel. It's, a, it's, it's an expensive car. I said, do you make sure you look after and service and get the body work done? Yeah, of course I do. I said, well, why don't you just treat yourself with the same kindness you treat your car? That's the kind of least thing you could do, isn't it? No, but people don't. They, they will spend hours making sure that their car's running properly, making sure that, you know, other things in their life are okay, and they forget about themselves. And we know, because we, we do this work, that majority of our clients, the majority of our clients are female, are they not? They are. Because women are much more open to admitting they want to change than men are. And But how many, I, I cannot tell you how many women that I've met in therapy, they spend 20, 30 years of their life making sure their man is okay and fed and making sure their kids are fed and looked after. And they forget about themselves. And they turn around, the kids have gone to college, husband's gone off with the secretary, and they're, you know, what happened to me? They, you know, 
that people forget about their own worth, their own value. Before we leave here this evening, you are going to have an absolute understanding of just how incredible you are and how incredible your body is. Because your body is the most incredible creation. Just think about it. In this whole universe, you are unique. On a planet of 8 billion people, you are unique. In the history of mankind, there's been 100 billion people on this planet. 100 billion people. There's never been another you. There has never been another you. There will never be another you. You are totally unique and you are incredible. And today you're going to understand that the core of your being, the essence of who you are, is pure energy, light and love. That is who you are at the core of your being. You are still the same as you were when you were two months old. When all you wanted was to be fed and loved and held and looked after. And you, you didn't know there was anything bad in this world. You didn't know about mistruths and lies and pain and all that stuff. And the core of your being, I promise you, is still that. That total natural intelligence you were born with. Our potential. We're born with a potential. You know, I, I, I've got a really nice garden and I, I love growing flowers and stuff. I'm not an expert at it. But you could take a handful of different seeds, you know, a, a rose seed, a cabbage seed, a, you know, I don't know, you know, 30, 40, 50 different seeds in your hand. It'd be very hard unless you're um, an expert on that kind of thing to tell which seed was which. But within each of those seeds, it knows its potential. It knows it's going to be a rose. It doesn't matter what you do to that seed, it's going to be a rose. If it's a rose, it's not going to be a cabbage. And a cabbage seed is not going to be a rose. The potential for what that thing can be is already set in the seed. When you were born, you were born with a natural intelligence and incredible abilities. And then we get life coming in and people coming in and people with their own limitations, putting their limitations on you. And generally it's through kindness. Parents do it to us because they don't want us to get hurt. We don't want us to be embarrassed. Now you're a, you're a sporty kid, but you're not very academic. Don't try too hard, you know. You know, my oldest boy is now 52. When he was at school, at, uh, I thought, always thought he was a genius. You know, I mean, he sat at seven years old and, and worked out a Rubik's Cube. I still can't do it. He did that on his own, right? And I thought he was a genius from way on. But when he went to his first school, his primary school, his headmaster said, look, you know, he's a sporty kid. And he is, you know, he, he, he's ambidextrous, kicked with both feet, punched with both hands. But he, he said he's a sporty kid, but he's not very academic. Don't hold out too much hope for his 11 plus. In England, we had this thing called the 11 plus. And if you pass it, you can go to the grammar school, you go to the other school. And I thought, is he talking about my son? Because I know my son's brilliant. Because, <laughs> you know, and but he said, you know, don't don't expect too much. I had a business locally at that time. And one of the teachers came in one day. And anyway, my, my son, as it happens, he came home and uh, it was in the days where you could give a kid a clip around the year old, you know. And he came home and he said to his mum, his mum said, how'd you do? He went, oh, I finished. I had 10 minutes to spare. She said, you failed. <laughs> Give me a clip around the ear. Anyway, um, this teacher came in to my business and she said, I don't know if I'm supposed to tell you or not. She said, but your son passed his, his 11 plus with the highest mark the school ever had. Right? If I'd listened to those teachers, if he'd listened to those teachers, you know, where would we be? But most of the limitations we have aren't ours. They're placed on us. They're put upon us. And not always, you know, maliciously. I don't believe that most parents do things to us maliciously, but they're, they're functioning on the beliefs they've been brought up with. It's generational. You know, it, it, I come from a family of, of, I've got four brothers, two mm -hmm. sisters. We came from the estates. Uh, and when we left school, you know, the most I could hope for was like a labouring job or working in a shop. 
that was it and that was expectation and if i'd listened to those people in fact i didn't do it i didn't do a degree until i was 60. and if i'd known how easy it was i'd have done it at 16. no but i thought a degree university you know no i left school at 15. yeah and so what i'm saying is the limitations we have generally aren't ours there are a couple of things i want you to learn today and one of them is this thing i create called a blink and delete technique it's very simple i'm going to teach it to you before we get into the hypnosis tonight because i think it's really important this is what happens and again everything i'm saying is just my opinion right it's not cast in stone it doesn't mean that it's true but this it's an opinion that's formed by seeing over 35,000 clients face to face never mind the people I've seen online and the people I've trained so I have an opinion and my opinion is this as human beings we're always making the best decision we can for ourselves always we're making the best decision in every moment we're making the best decision for ourselves but when you're five and six you don't have all the information when you're 13 and someone offers you a cigarette and everyone, all your mates are smoking and you see adults smoking, you think it's an adult thing to do. You don't have all the information. If you could go out and to be 30 and look back, you would go, you would have the information and you may be saying, no, I don't think I will. Thanks. But we're making the best decisions we can with the information we have, but we don't have to live with the decisions we made when we were 10, 15, 20, you know, one of the most stupid sayings we have is where well, you made your bed, you got a lie in it. I mean, that's ridiculous. If it's uncomfortable, get out, make it again. Why would you lay in that bed? No. And we don't have to live with decisions we made when we were kids. Right? And this is another sad fact about us as human beings. Most of our beliefs, what we believe we are, what we believe is, you know, right and wrong, what we believe we can, cannot do. Most of those beliefs were created by a child under seven. Think about that. You would not have a five-year-old girl making a lifelong decision about what you are capable of. You would not have a four-year-old boy making a lifelong decision about who you actually are. But yet most of our beliefs, even our religious beliefs, were created by a child under seven. We don't have to live with those beliefs. So the blink and delete technique, I'm going to teach you it now. It's very simple. And you can be doing this on the bus or while you're standing in a queue or you, while you're shopping. This is how it works. If you've got a pen... Fair enough, Freddie. Can I down. just get you, sorry, to just to double check to see if there anybody in the, in the waiting room there just before okay. you do that. Sorry, now um no i don't think there is no okay perfect okay okay thanks so it's a very simple technique okay this is the way it works and you're all going to do it because you're all going to hear these words in your head you know when you come up against a block i can't do this i'm never going to do that i'm not any good at that you know those words like i think it was laurie hammond called the imposter monster in our head you know that those negative voice in our head that says you can't do that you're never going to do that you're not any good when you when you hear those words in your mind or you come up against a block in your life you ask this question when did i make that decision how old was i where was i who was i with and was it even my decision you ask that question i promise you this when you ask that question you will immediately go to when you made the decision. And very often, it will be before you were seven years old. And what you do then is you look at that decision from where you are now. Because you've evolved. You are not the same person you were a week ago. You are definitely not the same person you were 20 years ago because you've had experiences and you've had learnings. So you look at it from where you are now and you ask this next question. Now that I've evolved, is that decision any longer viable? 
or is it an obsolete decision that I made in a less informed state? And if the answer comes back, no, it's no longer viable, you blink twice and you delete that decision. And then you go to neutral emotion. I'm going to teach you how to do that this evening. Go to neutral emotion and make a new decision. It's very simple. The moment you come up against a block, I can't do this, I can't do that, I'm never really going to be any good at this, I'm, I'm, not, you know, I'm not any good. Whatever that block is, you just ask that question. Where did I make that decision? How old was I? Where was I? Who was I with? Was it even my decision? And the fourth part of that question, you often find it wasn't your decision. It was someone else's opinion about you. And maybe it was a you no, know, it wasn't done maliciously, but it was a, someone else's opinion. Because you're a child, now an adult, you think that must be true. But now you've evolved and you can look back and say, maybe that wasn't true. And then you can look at it again. And then you blink twice, you ask the next question. I promise you this. It won't take you three years of regression therapy to get back to that moment. You'll do it when you ask the question. The hard thing for you is to say, can that possibly be true? But you have to accept your unconscious mind works in microseconds and it knows exactly where you made that decision. Then you ask the next question. Now I've evolved. Is it any longer viable? If the answer is no, Blink twice and delete it and go to neutral emotion. I'm going to show you how to do this. Most of the big decisions you've made in your life, the big decisions were made in an emotional state. And when we're emotional, we're not functioning properly. If you're angry, you are not functioning properly. If you are jealous, you are not functioning properly. My son cringes when I say this, but I say never decide to get married when you are madly in love with someone. That is not the time to make that decision when you can't wait to jump each other's bones. That's not the time to make that decision. Wait until three or four months in. You're having a cup of coffee together. Don't know what to say to each other. And if you still want to spend the rest of your life with that person, make the decision then. But, we, you know, we make massive decisions when we're emotional. To be able to go to neutral, and that's not I don't care, it's neutral. You can make the right decisions, you can take the right actions, you can get the right outcome. To be able to keep your head in any situation, to be able to go to neutral, we show you to do that tonight. And of all the things I've developed, I think it's the most important thing I've developed. You know, when I first had the idea for this, and I put it out like I do on Facebook, I think I can teach you how to switch off your emotions people said well if you switch off your emotions doesn't that make you more robot than human and it's a good good question but having used this now for, for years and taught lots of people how to use it as well i think it's the opposite i think it makes you a more advanced human being until you can take control of your emotions you are a slave to your emotions Someone breaks your rules. I'm angry. I have a right to be angry. Someone's broken my rules. I have a right to be angry. Not, I'm gonna, not only going to be angry at the person that broke my rules, I'm going to be angry at the people around me as well. People have nothing to do with that. They're going to suffer for three days as well. I saw some of you deal with people with anger management problems. Like, oh, I've got anger management problems. My 13-year-old boy said that to me once. It's not my fault, but anger management problems. <laughs> yeah okay you know and i'm sure you have clients like that and i and i i ask my anger management clients one question because generally the people are angry with are the people who are closest to them their wife their kids and i ask the question do you speak to your boss like that very people have said yes they don't i say you speak to your colleagues like that they go no I said, well, you're just an effing bully. I've had grown men crying in my office at the realisation that that's what they are. If you wouldn't speak, if you have the control not to speak to your boss like that, if you have the control not to speak to your colleagues like that, and yet you're willing to take do that to your wife and your kids, then all you are is a bully. 
And when I when they come to that realization, I have had grown men crying with that understanding. But to be able to say, yeah, I'm angry, you know, we all feel angry at times. But to recognize when we're experiencing a negative emotion, anger, jealousy, things that are detrimental to us and detrimental to people around us, and to be able to say, right, this is this this is not a good way to feel. Go to neutral. How many of you? I, I, I imagine, you know, a few, especially men. How many really decent relationships you you wrecked by being jealous? How many really good people have maybe you thrown away because of your own insecurities, your own jealousy? If you had complete control over that and went, you know what, I'm going neutral and see it from where it should be. I think it's the most important thing. I'm going to teach you how to do that this evening. And your life will change because you're going to make decisions from that point. If you have to make a decision, go to neutral. As I said, in neutral, you can make the right decision. You can take the right actions, get the right outcome. In neutral, imagine teaching people who are emotion eat emotionally how to go to neutral. You know, the kids are winding me up. I've done it. My kids are winding me up. I'm looking in the fridge. I'm thinking, what well, am I looking in the fridge? My kids are just wound me up. So I want to eat something nice. But if you could catch yourself on the way to the fridge and go to neutral, <laughs> you wouldn't have to eat the cake. You know, that's the thing about being able to go to neutral. I'm going to show you how to do that. So with the blink and delete technique, which you now have, you get a block, ask the question, when did I make the decision? You'll go there, ask the next question. Now I'm now I've evolved. Is it any longer viable? No. Blink twice, delete it, go to neutral, make a new decision. We can be doing, we can be upgrading our brain all the time, every day, every moment of the day. You don't have to live with decisions you made 10, 20, 30, 40 years ago. You don't have to do it anymore. First, you have to accept, especially hard for us men, to accept we're behaving badly. That's a tough thing for us to, to accept. To accept that what we're feeling and why we're behaving is not good. And then to go to neutral and make a new decision or blink and delete that, that, that um, decision. So we're going to get into this. But more than anything else, I want you to experience that feeling of unconditional self-love. So that's what we're going to do. Have you got any questions before we get into this? No? Understand that while we're together here this evening, you're all that matters to me. And I mean that sincerely. I want all of you, when we go off this call, to be able to, go, to understand your absolute worth. And by that, I mean your value beyond your car, beyond your house you live in, the clothes you wear. So many of us, you know, put up, put value on those things. I want you to understand your real worth, your real value. How important you are to the people around you. How many of you are doing hypnotherapy here tonight? How many of you are working and helping people? Yeah. Well, I'm telling you now, you have a duty to look after yourself. You have a duty to be around as long as. We live in a world of pain. And if you're going to help those people, you need to be around. And you also need to be in your best state. So you can sit in the therapy chair and say to the person in the other chair, I can help you achieve what you want to achieve. And I'm not saying that you have to be perfect. I am a million miles from it, trust me. But I, all the time I, I'm striving, I don't even, it's not even the right word, all the time I'm working towards being the best I can be. You know, I try to be the best I can be physically so I can say to my weight loss clients, I can help you lose weight. Try to cut out all the fear and anxiety that I might have. In fact, I have done. I refuse to worry about anything. So that I can say to people, I can help you overcome your anxiety. And we need to look after ourselves. You know, be as kind to yourself as you are to your clients. Want for yourself, you want for your clients. That's all I'm saying it. And you're going to get that understanding to, before we finish today, your real, real value and your real worth. So if you're ready to get into this with me, 
I'm going to take you into the most profound, deep state of hypnosis. And I'm going to take you to that space of total, unconditional self-love. And while we do that, we're going to let go of any limiting beliefs that are ever placed on you. Because that's all they were. Every negative thought that may have ever held you back. Nice to see you, Mary. I just realised you were there. Last time I saw you, you were dancing. It was an incredible evening, yeah. Hope you're still feeling great. Good, good. Okay, right. So if you're ready to do this, make sure you're, you're in a safe place. So you're not sitting on a windowsill 10 stories up with a boiling cup of coffee in your lap or anything. Make sure you put a window open. Make sure you're in a safe place. Get yourself comfortable. Listen to me if you want, but I don't mean this rudely. I'm not interested in your conscious mind. Your unconscious mind will hear everything I've got to say and it will take from it what's needed for you to free yourself, to be everything you want to be. And you are going to have an experience. So what I'd like you to do is this. If you can, place your feet and your hands separately. Place your hands on your legs. And just when you're ready, just take a breath in. Hold it for a moment. And as you breathe out, just allow your eyes to close. Only as quickly as you're ready to accept and experience that feeling of unconditional self-love. I'd like you for a moment just to focus on those tiny muscles around your eyes and relax those muscles completely. Get a sense of that happening as you listen to my voice. Your eyes are relaxing so completely they just won't work for a while. Every word I say relax them even more. Get a sense of you having your temples massaged and those muscles are relaxing so completely it just won't work. And just for a moment, think about the people you love, people that love you. The people you've helped with your words and your kindness. Just see those faces, feel that love right now. And as you feel that love, your eyes have relaxed so completely now, they just won't work for a while. And when you realize your eyes are so relaxed, they just won't work for a while, you can test them, find it completely locked. That's right. Now, nothing bothers or affects you. Nothing disturbs you. I'm going to say some words. And as I say these words, I want you to repeat these words to yourself, but aim them at yourself. And even if at first you don't experience it, you will in a moment. So as I say these words, I want you to repeat them to yourself. My mind and body are completely calm and relaxed. My mind and body are completely calm and relaxed. My right arm is heavy and relaxed. My right arm is heavy and relaxed. My right arm is heavy and relaxed. My mind and body are completely calm and relaxed. My left arm is heavy and relaxed. My left arm is heavy and relaxed. My left arm is heavy and relaxed. My mind and body are completely calm and relaxed. My right leg is heavy and relaxed. My right leg is heavy and relaxed. My right leg is heavy and relaxed. My mind and body are completely calm and relaxed. My left leg is heavy and relaxed. My left leg is heavy and relaxed. My left leg is heavy and relaxed. My mind and body are completely calm and relaxed. 
my mind and body are completely calm and relaxed. Now, as you go deeper and deeper into that beautiful space, less and less aware of yourself as a physical body, totally aware of yourself as a mind, and your body just drifts through time and space. Being of freedom you may have never experienced before. Get a sense of that happening, just dropping down toward that place of profound, deep trance, even deeper than before, 10, 20, 100 times deeper. Get a sense of that happening. Imagine there's nothing you can do about that. Every word I say doubles that feeling. And just when you think you've reached the ultimate space of profound hypnosis and relaxation, my voice, my words are going to take you 10 times deeper. Get a sense of that happening now. Deeper, deeper, deeper down into that feeling. Every word I say doubles that feeling and everything I say now is your reality. Every suggestion I give you, your mind and body will act upon at a molecular, cellular, neurological level. It's now your reality. So you have a conscious mind and an unconscious mind. And that unconscious mind, the back of the mind, that instinctive, intuitive part of your being, that keeps your heart beating, that monitors your blood pressure, your body temperature, that scans the environment every microsecond, making sure you're safe, can continue to hear, to understand and respond to those things I might say without the need for you to do anything at all. It's so much easier for the conscious mind simply to relax and enjoy that letting go. That's right. Letting go even of the effort it takes to make the effort that it might take to tell the exact position of arms, legs or the entire body now that seems to drift through time and space. That wonderful free floating place of effortless relaxation and letting go. Allowing events to occur in their own time, in their own way. As you drift as a mind, and that mind drifts without boundaries, without borders, without limits. Allow yourself the pleasure of going out there into the future. You're creating the life you want by helping others create the life they want. You're using your wonderful skills to create the life that you want by helping others create the life they want. You're filled with a feeling of unconditional self-love and a new understanding about your worth and your value. Notice the way you move and the way you breathe, waking up in the morning energized, going about your day with a new feeling of freedom. Notice the way you move and the way you breathe. Step into that body, feel into it. Get a sense of how good that feels to be free to create the life you want and ask this question, how much fun is this? How much fun can I make it? How important is it for me? Because now you know how good you're going to feel. Everything about your nature is inclined toward making it happen. And your unconscious mind can allow those changes to occur while the conscious mind drifts off someplace else entirely now. That's right, in your own time, in your own way. Aware of events that occur along the way. As the unconscious mind utilizes that opportunity to alter your awareness and to continue that learning in whatever way is the right way for you. Learning that feeling of letting go. Just let go. 
allowing the unconscious to assume more and more responsibility for guiding, directing awareness as you continue to learn even more than before about your abilities, your capacities to learn as you relax, as you relax and go even deeper into hypnosis. Get a sense of that happening automatically. Imagine there's nothing you can do about that. The deeper you go, the better you feel. The better you feel, the deeper you'll go, just dropping down into that beautiful space. And as you drift even deeper, I want you to have the most incredible experience of liberation and freedom. Because in a moment, the essence of who you are, that intangible part of your being, the passenger, the observer in that physical body, is going to separate from your body and drift up out through the crown of your head and separate from your body, the essence of who you are. Now, some cultures call it the spirit, the soul. I call it the essence, that intangible part of your being. Get a sense of that happening now, just drifting up out through the top of your head and leaving that body in that chair for a while. Get a sense of that happening, a feeling of liberation, free of all earthly ties. And as you drift away from your body, I want you to look back at that body in that chair and for a moment show it some appreciation. How incredible are you? You are the most incredible creation. You are unique. Notice that the essence of who you are is infinite. It's ageless. And the essence of who you are is pure light and joy and love. Feel into that now as you leave that body in that chair for a while. And make a decision as you look at that body to treat it with some kindness. Know it's okay to love your body, to be kind to your body, to want for your body what you want for your clients, what you want for your children, what you want for the people you love. Just look at that body for a moment. Show it some appreciation. How incredible are you? Now get a sense of drifting up out of that building you're in. Just drifting up into the sky, drifting higher and higher, like a helium balloon that some young child has let go of in the park. Get a sense of drifting so high that you can actually look back and see this beautiful planet we're living on. See that beautiful blue planet spinning through space and time. The whites of the clouds, the whites of the mountain tops, the greens of the forest and the blues of the ocean. Get a sense of that beautiful planet spinning through space and time. How incredibly lucky are we to have landed on this planet? And notice as you look at that planet from way off, how your perspective changes. You can think about the 8 billion people on that planet, of which you are one, one unique, incredible individual. And notice how your perspective changes. Things that had seemed overwhelming no longer have any power over you. Things that had seemed hard or difficult to overcome no longer have any power over you. Now in your mind's eye, get a sense of a target, like an archery target, a massive target between you and that planet. Or maybe see it like a spinning vortex of coloured lights. And see the centre of that vortex. And in the centre of that vortex, in the centre of that target, it's the most incredible, intense feeling of unconditional self-love. The centre of that target is stacked with that feeling of unconditional self-love. And in a moment, I'm going to make this sound. As I make that sound, you're going to be fired, sucked into that vortex, straight through that vortex, into a space of unconditional self-love. And as you go through the centre of that target, Every negative, limiting belief that is placed on you that never belonged to you in the first place will be wiped from your mind and body. The most incredible experience of liberation. So get ready. In a moment, I'm going to make this sound. As I make that sound, you'll be fired, shot like an arrow straight through that target into that space of unconditional self-love. And I want you to know that you are worthy of feeling it. 
get ready because it's going to be the most incredible experience a space you may have never experienced before so get ready and i want you to enjoy every moment get ready and now you're in that space your mind and body being flooded with the most intense incredible light Feel like a golden light coming in through the crown of your head, flooding through your body, a feeling of unconditional self-love. And I want you once again to think about the people you love, people that love you. See those faces, feel that love now. Feel it like a burning hot sun in the summer sky. Shrink it down to a white hot nuclear powered ball of light as big as a golf ball. Pull that into your heart center and feel your heart expanding with that feeling of love. Feel it now. Feel it flooding through your body and notice your body cannot contain it. Feel it spreading beyond your body and rippling out to the edges of the known universe. And you're at the center of that feeling of love. Because you are love and you are loved and you are loving. Feel into it now. Feel your heart expanding with that feeling of love. I want you to think of a moment right now, a moment of laughter, a time when you just belly laughed. Think of a moment of pure laughter. And I want you to think of that moment now. And I want you to go and step into that moment, feel into it. Get a sense of that feeling of complete, unconditional laughter. And I want you to reach up with your right hand like you're reaching up for the stars. Reach up with your right hand and grasp that feeling of laughter. Grasp that feeling, reach up with your right hand and grasp that feeling of laughter. Now pull it into your heart center. Put your left hand over your hand and feel that feeling of laughter and unconditional love flooding through your body. Feel your heart expanding without a feeling of laughter and love. Now think of a moment of gratitude for someone or something, a moment of pure gratitude and step into that moment once again, feel into it, get a sense of it. And once again, when you're ready, reach up for that feeling of gratitude with your right hand, like you're reaching for the stars. Grasp that feeling of gratitude and pull it into your heart center. Put your left hand over that hand and feel your heart expanding with that feeling of laughter and gratitude and unconditional self-love. Feel that flooding through your body. Because you are love and you are loved and you are loving. That is who you are. The essence of who you are is pure light and energy and love. Feel into it. And that feeling of unconditional self-love is spreading through your body into the very marrow of your bones. And you're going to take that feeling into everything you do. A new understanding about your worth and your value. And you'll want for yourself what you want for your clients. You'll want for yourself what you want for people you love. And you'll treat yourself with a new kindness. You'll take care of yourself. Be kind to yourself. Look after that body in that chair. Because you are worth it. Feel into that feeling now. Feel it expanding. You are love. You are loved. And you are loving. The most incredible, wonderful thing of unconditional self-love. And as you drift in that space, my voice, my words are going to drift with you to become a part of your experience now. Get a sense of just dropping even deeper into that, that space. Even deeper than before. And go over it with your unconscious often as you need to. To know that you are love and you are loved and you are loving. And you are worthy of that feeling of unconditional self-love. Feel that feeling of laughter and gratitude flooding into your body and your mind. That's who you are. The essence of who you are is pure light, energy and love. You have within you all the resources the natural intelligence and strength you need to create the life you want by helping others create the life they want. How incredible are you? And it may be interesting to know that in that relaxed, drifting state of mind, where those thoughts drift by like dreams, and some enter the mind and some drift through the mind, 
Some are left behind to be used later on. Others are remembered or seem to be remembered at first, but then become more and more distant, forgotten over time. And time changes too, so you'll know what a trance it's been. When you begin to know that what seemed to be a short time turned out to be a long time, or what seemed a long time was really no time at all. So I'd like to give that opportunity now. It's your privilege. Go over with your unconscious mind as often as you need to, to know that you're free. Free of the past, free of the future, free to be in this moment, to be right here in this moment, in this present moment, to feel into that feeling of unconditional self-love, to know that you are love and you are loved and you are loving. Feel that now. How incredible are you? And go with your unconscious often as you need to, to know that you're free. Because in a moment, I'm going to count to 10. Every suggestion I've given you, your mind and body will act upon. On eight, your eyes will open. You will feel incredible because you are incredible. And on 10, that feeling of unconditional self-love, that feeling of freedom, that new understanding about your worth and your value, it's going to grow stronger day by day as you continue to create the life you want by helping others create the life they want. So get ready. One, feeling absolutely wonderful. Two, to create that life you want. Do it brilliantly, fearlessly. Three, a feeling of freedom from every limiting belief that ever held you back. Feel that feeling of freedom now. Four, feel the force of that energy and love flooding through your body and mind, filling you up. That feeling of gratitude and laughter and love. Five, feeling incredibly alive now. Six, seven, eight, eyes opening, feeling absolutely wonderful. Nine, ten. Excellent. Back in the Zoom, as Anthony would say. Thank you. That was amazing. Am I on? Yeah. Yeah. Good. Well, thanks for turning up and listening. I'd have been a bit silly talking to myself. Yeah, my word is unrestricted after that completely. There you go. Just, you know, understand, you know, take this feeling into everything you do. Treat yourself with the same kindness. No, it's okay to do that. You know, we, we're told we shouldn't blow our own trumpets. We shouldn't be this, shouldn't be this, shouldn't be that. I'm saying to you, it's your duty. It's totally your duty. If you haven't learned to be hypnotist or hypnotherapist, it's okay to sit in your front room and not let anyone know you're there. That's okay. But now you have a skill. You have the ability to help people. And it is your duty to let people know you exist. You know, we have so many people, students come do our training. And I go off the course, I don't want to sell myself. You know, I, I, I love helping people. But I don't want to sell myself. I don't want to put myself out and say, look, I'm a hypnotherapist, blah, blah, blah. The word sell comes from the Norwegian word, selje, which means to serve. You have a product or a service that can enhance someone's life and you get in front of that person and you don't sell it to them. You've done that person a, mis a disservice. You have the ability to help people. You, have, you can save people's lives. If you open someone out of a smoking habit, you're going to save their life. If they don't know you exist, you are doing that person a disservice. I know we don't want to do it. We don't want to make the videos. We don't want to do the TikTok. We don't want to do the YouTube stuff. We don't. But I'm saying to you, it's now your duty to do so. Because if they don't know you exist, you can't help them. So that's my kind of last thought on it. But feel into this feeling. Know that you are worthy of that unconditional self-love. And see what happens. I hope you all enjoyed it anyway. No, Freddie, it was amazing. Thank you. Thank um, you. This was the first time that what we've done is, because we we do this kind of on a regular enough basis, 
from the conference that this group kind of created after that. So if anyone does want to join us, please just connect with us and we can expand that group because something that we're looking to do kind of as many Mondays as possible. Um, yeah, so just connect with either Sharon or myself or anyone who's part of the group, um, whether it's EAPH or whether it's uh, uh, JHA. Uh, wherever you are, wherever you are in the world. You know, I know we've got you know, Paul here from America. You know, I know we've got Doreen from Holland. Hi, Doreen. You know, I know we've got people. Orla, where are you? Australia? Orla, no, she's right up the road here. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, we've got people from all over the world here. April is the conference in Ireland, in Dublin. Yeah. You know, start saving. Look down the back of the city, get your pennies together. However you have to make it to get there, get there, because it's going to be great. And let's make it something special. You know, well, John's yeah. put this together, he's, you know, and he's, he's creating something really exceptional in Ireland. And uh, so if you get a chance, let's, let's get together. You know, and Mary will be there. She'll be dancing for sure. Mary's <laughs> a great dancer. You know, I've seen all that going on. John's a great dancer. And we've got John O'Connor. I mean, he's a, he's like a... He's Absolutely. Like a, He's like a celebrity. Shoes. He's got, shoes he's got to bring the shoes again, John. He's, he's, John's, at, <laughs> John's at strictly dancing level, I tell you. So, you know, try and get over it. It'd be fun, right? Look, the idea is to create, the idea behind the conference was to create a community. This is part of that, and it's it's just ongoing. It's not annual. It's a continuous thing that's building and developing. In fact, wherever Kenny is there, I can see him, but we're all going up to Larn next weekend, just, and that's something oh, else. That's Larn's going over, I mean, yeah, Swan Man. Is yeah, it? that's right. That's oh. one be there. Yeah. Um, yeah. And the other thing, of course, is that Freddie will be in Dublin in January. So details are 27 and 28, but we'll, we'll be announcing those in the next, we're putting it out in the next week or two. But um, so if anyone wants to see Freddie in person. And if, if, you, uh, if you're not already part of the Jack Quinn Hypnosis Academy, you can join for 14 days for free, right? You can join 14 days. You can binge for 14 days on all of our stuff. That's the two-day modern hypnotism workshop I did with uh, did for, with Mike Mandel in Toronto. It's really well filmed. You can download that. You can download my quit smoking protocol. All the back stuff I've done for the last 30 years is all there. If you really wanted to binge for two weeks and then press the button and say, I don't want to join. But, you know, the idea is that you'll want to, you'll want to stick with this. And part of our JHA throughout the summer – I know Guy's been on it, Lara's been there, a few others have been there, Doreen's been there. We have a two-day free, two-day live training somewhere in, in, we're probably going to come to Ireland because Anthony's coming to Ireland in April, so he's sure to do a, a retreat there somewhere. But all of those things are free for our members. So check it out anyway. But look for the, look, go and do that 14-day free trial and see what we're about. You don't have to stick with us. I'd like to think you would because it's, you know, it's great training, but have a look. And you've got lots of stuff there you, you could you could look at and, and utilize, all right? That's my self pitch. Done. Two minutes. There you go. Um, no, it's been brilliant. Freddie, thank you so much because um I mean ever since we met in January in Dublin, you know, so many things have rolled on since then. So um it's lovely. And I'm looking forward to next January and next April. Well, you know, you always I'm always open for you to invite me back to do another session for you all. I'll, I'll do it on something else next time. Um, but if you want me back to do another session, just let me know. And the idea behind this is so that we can all learn, expand, create, you know, just build that community of hypnotherapists in Ireland and beyond. You know, That's what this I, is what about. I, so. I say to my students, you know, let's see how many people we can help between us. I mean, how many people are on this? 28 people on here. You know, if we all helped 1,000 people in our in our work, that's 28,000 people with kids. Mm -hmm. you know, and that's a ripple effect. I, I personally, I've helped over 25,000 people quit smoking, personally, in, in you know, live, face-to-face. Uh, -face. In 2006, I saw 5,000 people for smoking in one year. And those people's kids aren't smoking. Well, actually, we're talking about 25, 28 years ago now. Their kids are growing up. The chances are they're not smoking. Their kids' grandchildren aren't smoking because they quit smoking. Never underestimate what you're doing when you're doing this work. It's not just the person in front of you that has a ripple effect. You're never going to see, you know, that's yeah, that's out there. So 
how many people can we help between us? I mean, it's, it's a lot of people. Let's just see how much, how many people we can help. Because uh, it's great, isn't it? We love this. It must, absolutely. Yeah, we absolutely, absolutely love it. So, anyway, that's me done. Anyone got any questions for Freddie? I'm glad you made it. Uh, Anyone got any questions for Freddie there before we sign off? Any questions at all? No, they're, no? All, they're all zoned to the Stunt. floor and stands. <laughs> all right, great. And uh, Trevor, I saw your uh, podcast with Linda Emmett. It was excellent. <laughs> Thanks very much. It's lovely, it's lovely of, you, of you to say that, Freddie. Thanks a million. Appreciate yeah, if, it. If you, want, if you ever want me to come on, give me a shout. Okay, Freddie. Thanks very much. Thanks right. See you all. Love thanks you. so Freddie. much, Freddie. Oh, Thank thanks you. a million, Freddie. Thanks. Freddie. Good night, everyone. Good night. Everybody. Bye. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.